Welcome back for part two of CSS Grid Layout, where we're going to examine grid template areas and anonymous text. I have re-enabled the display of the title area content. I've also added a header right widget area, a menu, which is a very standard configuration. Now, under the CSS Grid Layout auto placement rules, child elements are supposed to start in the first grid item content elements. But instead, I see that we now have four grid item areas, even though I've enabled only two. When you declare a grid under CSS grid layout, as we have with site header wrap, all child elements become grid items. But I can see that this isn't the case here, or is it? Let's examine this a little bit further and find out where these two mystery areas are coming from. As we scroll down and look at our content, we see that there's content in the before pseudo area and the after pseudo element for the site header wrap. What is this content? Well, let's look at our style sheet. We can see wrap before. It's a generic wrap before where the Studio Press developers are adding a blank space. Why are they doing this? Let's look at style CSS in the editor, and we can see it's an area of what they call float clearing. We have all of these generic before pseudo elements and all of these generic after pseudo elements where they have added a single space. A space, any content added without being wrapped in the standard HTML element like a div, a paragraph tag, or a span, is what is known as anonymous text. The content in this before and after pseudo element areas are anonymous text. You can't see them, you don't know they exist until you try to create a grid and suddenly they appear. So how do we fix this? Well, what we can do is we're going to go to our style sheet. I've already created some CSS here that I'm going to uncomment now. That is very specific to the site header. Site header wrap before, site header wrap after. I am removing the content and I'm turning off the display of those two areas. Once I save this, return back to my page, refresh, and now we have a standard looking Genesis header. Anonymous text can really trip you up and it's something that can actually drive you pretty crazy if you don't know what to look for. So just be very careful when you're using CSS Grid with Genesis. You know that we have all of these generic before and after pseudo areas that have blank content in it and you have to remove that if you want your CSS Grid to display properly. Another thing that we can do here is clean up some of the CSS that is delivered with Genesis because there are some CSS directors that are no longer necessary. For example, in the header right widget area, if you look at this, we have a width set of 800. That width really doesn't mean anything when it's a grid item. We can also remove the float. Our text align right is going to move the menu over anyway. So let's move on to CSS grid areas now. We're going to add another directive to our CSS for site header wrap called grid template areas. And I'm just going to call the areas header left and header right. Now, initially, when you assign an area in CSS grid, Content flows from the first grid item to the last. We can change that using a grid area. We've created the grid area templates. We've assigned a name to this. So if I say that this is grid area, header left, it goes to header left if I take this. Uh, widget area, and I say this is in grid 
area. Enter right. Everything looks the same, but I can mix this up now by just assigning, changing the name. Let's say I want the menu on the left. Well, I can assign it to grid area left. Look what happens. And I want the logo and content, title on the content. I change the header left there to header right. And look at what happens. Everything just switches around. We can do this with as many grid areas as you want. We can name rows, we can name columns. We can actually create what you would remember in table layouts as spans uh, for either column or row. And it's all pretty neat. I'm going to adjust the CSS for a second. Let me just uh, pause this video for a second so I can change some of the, the, the CSS and the HTML, and then I'll explain to you what I've done. All right, so I've adjusted our CSS. I've added some, and also our HTML. I've edited the HTML and I've brought over some additional areas. We have, uh, I've changed the grid template column to be more in line with the column layout of Elegance Pro. And I've named the grid template areas. We have header left, header center, header right. That is the first row. And then on the second row, I have header left bottom, Again, header center, which causes a span across these two rows, and header right bottom. And I've added the corresponding HTML into my inspector by just, the way that you would do that is I just edit as HTML, I copy and pasted some stuff that I created offline. So this is very much uh, the way that you would define a header similar to Elegance Pro. Each of the grid areas are being assigned to a named area. The title area we've changed to header center. And then we have header right, header left bottom, header right bottom. Of course, you would adjust the CSS so that it displays a little bit more like header uh, Elegance Pro, for example. The, Grid gap could be changed so that things are closer together. You can left align text, right align text, do anything you want now at this point. You can create the lines that Elegance Pro uses by using borders and so on and so forth. At this point, it's just standard CSS. So that is basically how you can create a very flexible header with the Genesis framework using CSS grid layout.